last thing for for kids in the area, parents in the area, what would you tell them? I mean, you've given up a lot to get to where you go. I don't think people where you're going to go. I don't think people realize how much you know. Hockey's a big commitment for families financially and time wise, even when kids aren't as serious as you about it. But what um, you know, what advice would you give? Uh, you know, yourself two years ago. This is your dream. Um, you know, any things you would tell kids to avoid things that they need to look out for or just um you know just you know how'd you how'd you do it right for me for me it's still like learning you learn new things all the time i feel like i've learned just a little stuff for the game example like lace bite i used to have a problem with lace bite i figured that out i sit and i started tucking in my tongue it feels better now i don't get coach lace joe bite. always talks about people <laughs> tying their skates yeah i think that's a big important. that's important because i i just little stuff like that right. but other than uh, I think for for me and I think players out there that you you'll learn stuff like that just being around players on and off the ice you learn just little stuff but <clears throat> stuff to stay away from really uh, I would say not reco- proper recovery after like let's say like a long weekend you don't do any stretching you don't really eat right I feel like that's terrible because that next skate practice you'll be not ready to skate. Yeah. So I think recovery is a big deal. And just getting your body. Can you overdo it? I mean, how do you know? Like, how do you react when you feel like... Do, do you, can you sense when it's like, I got to take a break? You know. I think I think every player knows. Like, when it's when you just don't have that bite in your stride, your shot. Just You don't have that bite, that aggression. And, so, and I feel that's when you're really, like, kind of burned out. That's, that's when you need, like... Just a couple of days, just to, and when I say a couple of days, not days just doing nothing. You still got to stretch, just do little stuff, sure. eating, drinking water, little stuff like that. So I just got back from power skating. I had, a, I was in uh, Foxborough this week just doing private power skating, Monday through uh, Thursday. I got back Friday morning, and these past three days I've been doing a yoga refresh. So it's like three days I do mm-hmm. that. I did that Friday, Saturday, and then today was my last day. I got on the ice, and I yeah. felt fine recovered. Right. So going, honestly, coming off of Friday, I could not skate. I would not be able to skate Saturday because I'm just – you need a, that time to recover too. So, But um, one more thing, if players do get laced by, try tucking in your tongues and your <laughs> skate because that does help. And just Not wrapping them around three times. Yeah. <laughs> you heard it here first from Bryce, flop – is nothing in compared to tucking the tongues. <laughs> there we have it. Bryce, thank you for your time. Thanks for playing tonight. Uh, I know that a lot of kids were excited to have you out here. Gross. And I know we got a, we got a grudge match coming up with you and Stephen Halliday here <laughs> in the next few weeks. So we'll get Stephen on the podcast, but we might need you to actually make him speak. Can you right. come out and join us for that? Of course. All right. Well, thanks for being with us, Coach Joe. Thanks for being here, and uh, we'll catch you next time. Thank you so much for having me. I yeah. appreciate it. Interview with Bryce Montgomery was brought to you by Jelk Dicks, an official partner of the USHL. Jelk Dicks is the new standard in hockey training. The Jelk Dicks game changing weighted training stick is infused with stick gel patented gel polymer, adding evenly distributed and balanced weight to wrap the training stick while still retaining the integrity of the flex and kick point of the stick. Combine this with the ability to incorporate the specifications of your actual game stick, and now you've arrived at a whole new level of training. To celebrate our DMV Hockey partnership with Gel Sticks, we are now offering $20 off this great new training aid simply by going to the website www.gelstix.com and using our promo code DMV20, you can get $20 off your own Gel Sticks training stick and you can immediately begin realizing the results of working with the product, which is, is just incredible. Uh, it's taking the hockey world by storm. There's uh, m- many professional teams, including TJ Oshie and some other players for the Capitals who are using the stick. Um, the United States National Team Development Program uh, is using the stick. There's testimonials from David Quinn, the New York Rangers head coach, Rick Tockett, the Phoenix Coyotes head coach on the website. Uh, Cam Atkinson of the Columbus uh, Blue Jackets also is a partner. It's a, a tremendous product. Um, helps increase your strength, your shot velocity. Um, allows you to become a better puck handler. Receive passes more effectively. Just a great all-around training aid. 
and uh, just because of the technology and the way the stick is designed, when you go back to using your lighter game stick, uh, there's no ill effects, no side effects to that. It's it's smooth transition. Uh, you're you're better at those particular skills, and, and using the lighter stick uh, that you're not working with in practice, it, it just doesn't make a difference. The, the technology is tremendous. The benefits of the stick are tremendous, and we are excited to partner with Gel Sticks and help you get $20 off again by going to the website www.gelstix.com and using the promo code DMV20, you can get $20 off this awesome new product. Moving on to our next segment, uh, we have Mike Chen back with us along with David Bonzo. Mike, as we mentioned earlier, has played the last couple years in the ECHL with the South Carolina Stingrays. Uh, he this year is uh, has been overseas and he's looking to potentially play in the KHL, um, one of the top professional leagues in the world. And uh, he's going to be joined by David Bonja also in this segment. And David is obviously the son of Capitals legend Peter Bonja. Uh, both both these guys grew up in the area. Uh, Mike Chen graduated from Good Council High School, played for Team Maryland, played for BC Caps went on to uh, Concordia University and then played Division Three. he transferred to Salem State where he played uh, for three years and was highly successful there. David Bondra was drafted in the OHL, he was drafted in the NEHL, he was drafted in the USHL. Uh, he ended up playing a year with the Chicago Steel in the USHL and uh, the team didn't do as well as he would have would have liked. It was actually the worst team in the league. He didn't have the offensive year that he wanted. was planning on coming back, but actually got cut and uh, moved on to the BCHL, where he had a big year offensively and ended up getting a scholarship to Michigan State, where he four years. Um, graduated there. He had a couple shoulder injuries during his career. Didn't produce as much as he might have liked, but uh, managed to play four years of Division One hockey at one of the top programs in the country. A little different route for Mike Chen. Mike played in the EJHL with the New Jersey Hitmen after he had signed a tender agreement in the Tier 2 NAHL with Amarillo. Um, he played with New Jersey. Uh, didn't really fit in, in his opinion, with the coach's style and, and how they wanted to play as a defenseman, so he asked uh, for a trade and ended up playing with New Mexico in the NAHL. Uh, for a year and then um, went back to Boston, uh, back to the EJHL to play with the Boston Bandits um, for his last year, um, which was a great move for him. As we always talk about with the kids getting to the New England area where there's so many coaches and colleges within such a short distance, uh, it's, it's a tremendous help in terms of visibility and, and ease of recruitment and being able to go visit campuses and coaches being able to see you. So he played for the Bandits, uh, ended up going, as we said, to Concordia out in Wisconsin, transferred back to the New England area to Salem State, um, and played three years and was very successful there. So just completely different paths. Both guys started in our area. Um, one went kind of the high-end route, actually was also drafted. David was drafted in the KHL, um, and you know he was drafted by the top leagues in the country. Mike kind of had to work his way throughout the process, signed a tender agreement at Tier 2, but ultimately played in um, you know, one of the top leagues in the country that produces Division 3 talent. One played Division 1, the other played Division 3. Um, professionally, Mike, um, as we said, played. he started in the Southern Pro League with Knoxville, was on the all-rookie team, got a quick call up to the ECHL with... Um, Stingrays in South Carolina, had a good uh, a good short stint there and got offered a contract and played most of last season. He suffered a knee injury and is continuing to recover from that as he prepares for next year. Um, and again, he's had discussions and is uh, waiting on his contract to potentially go play in the KHL. On the flip side, David uh, Bondra went back to his native land, even though he was um, he's an American citizen as well. He also is a Slovakian citizen. He went back home, played professionally there for a couple years, had a big year his second year. It all kind of came together and uh, has had two tours of duty in the World Championships with the Slovakian national team, just finished up a few weeks ago, 
playing in the World Championships with Slovakia, and uh, just uh, two two very different routes. But what we like to talk to the kids about is uh, the perseverance. Um, even though David is drafted by very high-level leagues, things weren't handed to him, and he actually got cut and didn't know what he was going to do, and found a great opportunity. We always say, go where you're wanted, go where you're going to play, go where you're going to get the best opportunity to show what you can do. He did that in the BCHL and ended up playing in hockey. Mike Chen kind of bounced around and, again, found a good fit for himself in Boston with the Bandits and what was then the EJHL. Now the Bandits and the Hitman both are NCDC Tier 2 teams. Uh, but after uh, finding his way with Boston, ended up playing four years of Division 3 hockey. And although their paths were completely different, both players might end up playing in the same league this year as David also is looking to potentially play in the KHL uh, after a couple years in Slovakia. So, um, our interview was great with them, and it was extremely long as we got through the junior and college process, so I wanted to let everybody see that, and then uh, bring you up to speed now, as uh, Mike Chen is talking about basically um, his college career into the pro career, and then what he's up to now, uh, and David Binder also will do the same as our interview with those two picks up from this point here. Yeah, so uh, yeah, I went to Concordia, where where they play those are arguably the top teams in the in the nation every single year. Um, I was like, oh man, this is gonna be great for me to develop. I one of my best friends went there, um, and from what I could tell, it was a good school academically. Uh, so I committed there. Um, went there in the fall. Didn't really look too much into the school in terms of the student life. I guess it was a Lutheran school. Uh, I went to Catholic school for 12 years before that for high school, so I was like, "Oh, this this should be a little bit, a little bit easy of a transition for me." But it, it couldn't have been more different in terms of uh, how they handled it at, at the Catholic school I went to for high school. It was more the religion was more of a byproduct. It was you know school was first, sports, and then you know the religion came underneath that. And then, but at Concordia, it was more religion is first, and then after that, the sports and academics, which you know to each their own. Uh, I. I would say I'm somewhat of a practicing Catholic, but it, it was it was a little too much for me. Um, the school, the campus, wasn't really much what I wanted. Uh, so after after playing there for a year, I talked to my parents. You know, I, at that time, my my hopes of playing pro were were dwindling. Um, so we just decided to try to go to a school to where to where you could play good hockey that's somewhat close to home and to where you could you know, hopefully find a job after you graduate. So I, I talked to a school who actually reached out to me in juniors, told them I was looking to transfer, and I I ended up going to Salem State under the legendary coach Bill O'Neill. If you live in Massachusetts, you probably know the guy. Uh, and, you know, he was he was very nice. He took me in. I, I don't even know if he remembered me in juniors, but he kind of just looked at my stats and saw I played a year of D3 already. So he took me in, and you know, Boston is, is such a big hub for networking and for, I mean, whether it's for hockey, for jobs, there's so many businesses there and everyone knows, knows everyone, you know, in one way, form or another. And, you know, I, I thought that'd be a good, good way to, you know, start network, networking for, for jobs after school. So I ended up playing three years there. Uh, and kind of very similar to what, to what David said. I mean, I wasn't the greatest high school, uh, high school student and you know and d3 don't get athletic scholarships so this i mean with, with a little bit of help from the school and financial aid and everything but this was all coming from my parents you know paying for my tuition so um you know and and i think the three years of juniors also matured me a little bit more too to, to take it more serious but um same thing with joey i, I was uh I had, I had three degrees there uh sport management marketing and economics and uh, i graduated with honors and you know with that, I mean, my parents say it's worth every penny to, to have a degree and then to graduate with honors and be able to, you know, put that on your resume. I mean, I, I know Salem State isn't isn't uh, an Ivy League school or anything, but um, a lot of people in Boston know what it is, and, and there's connections everywhere there. So, uh, yeah, from there, I, I kind of uh, applied to grad school, too, and, and got into grad school, and then there's 
crazy opportunity for pro hockey came about and been doing it for two two years now hopefully three uh, for this upcoming season 